Another case that often comes up is that of a complex conjugate root. Consider the fraction we have here, h of s. You notice the second term in the denominator cannot be factored into real terms. This leaves us with two possibilities. Either deal with complex roots in the partial fraction, or keep the second order term in the denominator with the numerator of the second order term no longer constant, but is instead a first order polynomial. However, in this exercise we will factor the second term into complex root and solve both by hand and verify using MATLAB. Finding first the complex root, we can then expand the fraction as we did before. This is not typically the way you want to proceed if you are working by hand, but may be easier for computer solutions. Expand the fraction. You will notice that a1, a2, and a3 can be found using the cover-up method. For example, a1 can be found by multiplying h of s with s plus 5 and setting s equals to minus 5. Coefficient a2 can be also found by multiplying h of s with s plus 2 minus j. And setting s equals to minus 2 plus j. Remember, coefficients a2 and a3 are both conjugates of each other, so you only need to find either coefficient a2 or coefficient a3. Now we have the coefficients a1, a2, and a3. We can rewrite the fraction h of s as a sum of simpler fractions.
This will allow us to use the Laplace table in order to find the inverse of h of s. Using the fundamental properties in the Laplace table mainly in line 2 and 5 as highlighted here, we could find the inverse Laplace of h of s. Taking e to the power of minus 2t as a common factor and rearranging the terms between the brackets, we get the following. Here we multiply the numerator and the denominator of the first and the second term by 2 and 2j respectively. So we can arrive at the Euler identity for sine and cosine. In the previous videos, we only verified the partial fractions using MATLAB without verifying the inversion process, mainly because the exercises under study were simple to invert using the Laplace tables. However, here we will verify the inverse Laplace in MATLAB using the iLaplace function. In MATLAB, you can derive the inverse Laplace transforms with a symbolic math toolbox. It will be first necessary to convert the numerator and the denominator vectors to their symbolic equivalents. You need to have the symbolic math toolbox installed. If you get this error when you create the symbolic object, then you are most likely need to install the symbolic math toolbox.
Looking at the MATLAB I Laplace function result, you may notice the multiple parentheses in series, which could be confusing sometimes. So it's advisable you review term by term, and if needed, rewrite the MATLAB result in a more convenient form. Matching the results obtained in MATLAB with those obtained by hand calculations, it's clear that both results are the same. 